Hey folks, this is Ben from Road to VR, and I am here at Lucasfilm uh, checking out ILM X Lab. And I am met here with John and Vicky. John, can you tell me what you do at, at X Lab? Uh, I am the executive creative director, and I conceptualize and strategize. And Vicky? I'm Vicky Beck, and I am the executive in charge of ILM X Lab, so I oversee the um, strategy and the implementation of that strategy for the group. So we were just talking about how, although a lot of what uh, XLab has shown so far in their interactive exploratory storytelling has been Star Wars, you are also working with some other franchises. The experience that I just got to see is starting to feel a little bit more game-like, whereas I think some of the other ones were more storytelling driven. Um, now we're pressing buttons, now we're uh, interacting and, and defeating enemies. Where do you see the ultimate or is there an ultimate uh, direction right now for XLab, or is it just pure exploration in terms of storytelling versus gaming? Uh, well, what you just saw was a proof, was an experiment. Um, we do, we're doing a lot of those. Um, we are forming opinions, you know, about the form that we want to aim at. Um, we like a lot of different uh, forms. We we like. Uh, different, you know, for example, we like being in the expository surrounds of a story that we're not necessarily changing as much as a story that we're fully participating in. Um, there is no reason uh, if you're in a world uh, in which you can interact why you should not be. So we want as much interaction as possible. But experiences, you know, as these things are, you know, are called, um, they're going to be everything from zero to 100, and it would be kind of silly to sort of put a limiter on it. We, we, you know, it is very conceivable for us to, you know, think of a, a story that ends up as cinema that we could possibly punch through that cinema like a portal, um, see the uh, story that we may have observed, uh, almost like a living sculpture, and then explore uh, the the setting that that was, and explore in a free way. Um, so to have uh, interactive experiences, rummaging around, meeting characters, doing things that you see maybe happening in that, um, you know, all things not necessarily in a competitive sense mm -hmm. with scores and, and things of that nature, you know, but up to, you know, one could easily imagine uh, moving from the story all the way through to full on play, you know, in, in any given experience. Mm -hmm. But I think our emphasis really is in this area of immersive cinema or, you know, some people are calling it interactive narrative. And this particular experience was really trying to understand the balance between story and interactivity. We had done other ex um, experiments that helped us understand what is third person storytelling look like? How do you explore and discover stories? So this is really just sort of completing, um, well, actually not never completing, but continuing that process of um, exploration and understanding in this because it's such a new um, storytelling platform. Mm -hmm. And I know that Lucasfilm has been historically very technologically driven at doing these sorts of experimentations in the film space. Was there a singular point in time where you said, we need to do XLab, we need to start exploring and releasing experiences that are interactive rather than just developing technologies that benefit our, you know, our filmmaking and storytelling business? I think, you know, we really are about stories, and um, this was a new storytelling platform. So once it became clear that this was yet a new um, medium, then it was clear that we needed to be a part of that. Um, we had been doing quite a bit of pioneering um, uh, exploration, you know, R&D exploration in real-time graphics. So that certainly laid the foundation that enabled us to um, participate in this. But as a new storytelling platform, it was really important for us to be um, active. And not just virtual reality. I mean, we virtual reality um, is is one uh, aspect of what is turning out to be a very diverse uh, set of platforms that we can do this in. We're just as uh, curious about mixed reality, about mixing uh, content in your world, and how that will work. You know, how to tell stories, how to overlap the logic of a story universe with your universe. Can you do it? In what ways can you do it? Does one not pay attention to you? All these different sorts of uh, things. And um, 
And then, of course, there's just, I mean, we're in a renaissance period, period right now. There really is no clear target for a lot of folks um, at this point, uh, which is what makes it so fascinating. It's a renaissance moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so speaking of clear targets, right now, uh, several of the experiences that we've been able to see, and when I say we, I mean, you know, press people, uh, we get to see this on the Vive. We've seen the, the, the cave, the, the hollow cinema experience. These are things that only a small number of people are getting to see right now. Once th more hardware is getting out there uh, if, that can handle these virtual reality experiences, do you see X-Lab experiences like this getting released, even though they're still experiments, getting released so that the, the wider public can see it? Or is it more of a, these are still experiments and once you find something that you really think is worth grip, gripping onto and developing further, that will go into a more extensive production that will, that will go out to people? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, basically, uh, we're, we're gonna run on dual track. I mean, we're going to continue to be a lab, if you will, an experimental place. Um, and there will never be an end to the, the proofs th uh, that we'll be going after. Um, but at the same time, we're really interested in creating uh, wide-scale immersive entertainment for the, for the masses. Um, we, in, you know, see a time when millions and millions and millions of people are trying these experiences. So, uh, and uh, not necessarily even isolated, we see them, we see connected experiences, we see, you know, a evo an evolution of audience into a, no a new sort of social experience. So, um, yeah, we're, um, actively in development right now w with some uh, premium uh, pilot pieces. Uh, when you say connected experiences or, or that you see them, have you experimented with networked, networked multi-user VR uh, or, or other interactive medium? Yeah, we have. And um, a lot of our, we, we have a variety of um, creative needs here. I mean, we think that some of the greatest storytellers right now are making cinema and making games, for example, and that they are, they need to be brought through perhaps a new process in that which they already make to start developing um, the sensibility and the behaviors to, to create for immersive platforms. So we are very interested in changing the way films are made, for example, to step inside films before they're made. Uh, to have in, uh, intimate uh, sort of like performance experiences before one uh, actually gets out and creates. Um, at the same time, uh, it's not the case that things would stop there. I mean, a filmmaker could go about and, and make their story and then we can essentially um, create a, a virtual uh, counterpart or replica of that which they make, so it's it's actually a closed loop in that way. Uh, we can then step inside the cinema that they uh, create and then sort of use that as a departure point to go explore much deeper than that, that moment in time that you see. And when it comes to the experience that we got to see today, uh, wielding kind of the lightsaber, the iconic lightsaber for the first time, was this a uh, moment where you said, all right, we're going to, you know, do this and make it good and polish it up uh, and, and then move on to kind of another, another aspect? Or do you see, you know, carrying these uh, tools, as it were, that you're starting to develop and be able to use in VR into other experiences? You know, for, for instance, you know, maybe this is the lightsaber, maybe next time it is, you know, a blaster, and then you're using them together. Are you exploring them? One weapon at a time. <laughs> There's going to be one experience per weapon. Uh, and and droid and character. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, I guess I guess this this is a broader question. I guess is it about is it about recreating an ex is it about recreating a universe and the story of that universe, or is it about letting people touch and play in that space? It's sort of both, really. I mean, I think what's amazing about Star Wars in particular, but there are other franchises that have similar. Um, qualities is that it is, in fact, a very rich universe, one that people really want to um, explore and engage in. Um, but then there's also the opportunity within that to, um, you know, participate or interact with the world with these sort of iconic um, weapons or um, uh, vehicles, etc. So we kind of have the best of both. 
Yeah, I, I think I think I should. I mean, this is we think that um, immersive immersive platforms like VR and AR, you know, are not um, you know to be left in the realm of, of marketing fodder only. You know, um, we're we think that that is a, a, a platform unto itself an equal mm -hmm. to to cinema, for example, or it will be at some point. And to get to that level of depth, we have a lot of preparation to do. It's, we're in the Thomas Edison days. Um, it really is like that. But then at some point, it will be taken over uh, by the new art tours, the next generation of art tours of how to create content like this. Um, so the, the, the depth of the experiences, the depth of the stories we, we here uh, envision will be taken as seriously as anything else that we do. The folks who are our development group uh, for XLab are the same folks who are writing the scripts, who are plotting out the storyline of Star Wars across the next decade, mm -hmm. literally. And with that group, we're able to understand the, the, the map, you know, the trajectory of all of these threads, where characters are going, how force evolves, all these sorts of amazing things um, that may play out in different ways in the films. Uh, there is vast amount of territory to uh, create a different perspective upon mm -hmm. that could change your opinion about any of those other stories, um, to place you in the right spot at the right time and to uh, give you a, a reason to be there. Um, yeah, so we think it's going to be like as powerful as anything else. Right. Mm -hmm. Historically, there has been some, there have been many much loved Star Wars games. Do you see a merging and meshing of the more storytelling and cinema side uh, with the gaming side? Or, I mean, historically those have been separate. Do, do you think that down the road you see, you, you see collaboration with more of those companies that have historically made some of the, the great yeah. Star Wars games? Yeah, for sure. I mean, at some point. I mean, it, uh, when you get to a certain place where you're able to imagine a world, like for us, um, we're not finished until that world is flawlessly real. One of the things that we like. I mean, we, it doesn't, not all real things are great things, but one thing that we will do is produce photorealistic virtual reality. Um, and we imagine that across the years that the VR games, some VR games will also be in the same uh, sort of form. And there isn't any reason to think that if there's a destination, right, that a story or a game takes place, that there, that necessary, that doesn't necessarily have to have a border, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, that you could work walk from one to the other. I think we're, you know, really interested in the extended <coughs> storytelling opportunities. So we're interested in more episodic um, type of experiences where you can really um, explore and engage with that whole world. And to John's point, that engagement may, in time, look a lot like a game, mm -hmm. but it's all couched in. Um, in, in a much bigger story. Mm -hmm. So I think the future of storytelling um, in this space, is, you know, it's a really exciting time and we're kind of just at the beginning, as yeah. you said. We're not gonna be the ones who write it ourselves. I mean, it's going to happen by way of, like those who pour uh, their imaginations onto paper and, and create some, uh, create moments that, you know, for us, you know, the fans, experiencers of, uh, will never forget things that we keep in our memory through our entire lives. I mean, there, there are things housed in all of our minds that are so impactful, right, that we sort of almost use them as a guidepost for life at this point if, if they were done the right way. So the thinkers uh, and makers of things like this, when they enter VR, you know, and I don't feel like they've fully entered yet, but when they enter VR and augmented reality, not just VR, um, they're gonna they're gonna sort of reshape our you know our creative thinking. We're also developing a whole new language around this, and so a lot of people are trying to um, you know use words that they understand from our existing um, base of knowledge, you know, game story. Uh, but I think that because it's an entirely new platform, we are going to have an entirely new language, and I think what we'll see come out the other side is going to be something that we. Uh, haven't currently <laughs> identified. Yeah, I th uh, one thing I think I would mention, though, that uh, would be like, so, so, 
if a person wants to make a game or they want to make a film, they know how to crew that. They know how to put that together. Uh, these days, I mean, you know, uh, I have a sort of concept or I write something that I, and there are these like sort of processes that I don't have to worry about to go make that film, right, for example. That doesn't exist in VR. So we have this weird uh, sort of like chasm between a lot of folks who are right there sitting with, with the sort of like the gem, <laughs> the gem in their head that we need mm -hmm. to get into, into VR and AR, unable to do that because there, it's not frictionless to make this stuff yet. There's not, there's not teams and there's not, and this is a fundamental problem that, 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 that it has to become frictionless for the, the, the floodgates to open and for us to have like a new era. <laughs> Um, and that is the thing that we have to work on as a community is to figure out how to make it completely frictionless yeah. for the brightest people to get in. Yeah. Well, I think that because you guys have such an iconic universe like Star Wars to explore, you can easily attract those people that you're looking for. So hopefully we will see yeah, more of that as things go along. Well, thank you very much yeah. for joining me. Really appreciate it. Thank you.